Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home today. And did you know that it is National Angel Food Cake Day? Well, you know what? I didn't either and it just popped up when we were looking at our calendar of what we might want to do today for the show. And I thought, you know what? That is one of my favorite recipes and probably yours as well. But how many of you cheat and make your cake out of a cake box? Well, no more because this is so easy to do. One of my favorite things about Angel Food Cake is remembering that I loved it as a child. And I don't know whether it was the fact that I was so hyperactive that I was not able to eat the icing on birthday cakes, but as you can see in this video of me on my first birthday, I'm running around the coffee table celebrating the fact that I'm turning one years old and I still have the same amount of energy, don't I, y'all? So it must have been the Angel Food Cake, but it is National Angel food cake day and you know I looked through my, my ideas and some of the research that we did to prepare for the show today and the first recipe for angel food cake came out of a book that was published in 1878. We've got a picture of it right here and the author of the recipe was Isabella Stewart. So who knows? She could have been one of my distant relatives. So we're gonna get started with this uh, recipe for angel food cake. And I want to point out that it uses only seven ingredients. So we've got the ingredients right here. King Arthur cake flour, which I absolutely love to use in baking, is always available at the fresh market. Um, Morton salt, it's going to use cream of tartar, and I love to use Fresh Market brands when, when they have them for all of my recipes. They're just great quality products. Uh, vanilla extract, almond extract, sugar, and then of course eggs. So the eggs is probably the trickiest part. Many of you may be a little intimidated by the separation of eggs. So let me give you this little tip. When you're separating eggs, be sure you do that while they're still good and cold. Even though this recipe tells you to let the eggs come to room temperature, I want you to separate them while they're cold. As you can see from the ones that I did ahead, it's very easy for the egg white to separate itself from the yolk when it's still nice and cold. Um, when they're at room temperature, it gets a little bit trickier to do. So just keep that in mind um, for future reference. So in terms of getting this together, I've let my eggs come to room temperature. And the recipe calls for 12 eggs, but it also gives you an indication of how much in volume that is. So if I look on my measuring cup, I'm at one and a half cups of egg whites to make this recipe. So I'm gonna get started with my mixer and go ahead and pour those egg whites into my KitchenAid. And what we're trying to accomplish here is just to get those nice and frothy. Um, the technique for doing this has a lot to do with visual. So one of the reasons I'm gonna go a little bit slower tonight in my presentation is that I want you to recognize at what point you take all of these steps into consideration. So as these egg whites are whipping around, you want the speed to be on about a medium high. And so on this mixer, it's gonna be about eight. And as you can see, they're just starting to kind of whip up and get nice and bubbly. So one of the ingredients I'm gonna go ahead and add um, first is my salt. Before they get real stiff, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of just regular salt and a teaspoon and a fourth of cornstarch, not cornstarch, excuse me, cream of tartar. And the cream of tartar actually acts like cornstarch, which is probably what confused me there for a minute, but it is a stiffening agent that will help get these egg whites where they need to be as I'm going through this process. I'm also gonna add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of almond extract. And for those of you that aren't that crazy about almond, the almond extract can be something that you don't have to use if you want to just use the vanilla. So as we go into this, I'm gonna keep letting this whip around until it gets to a nice soft peak. So come back with me after the break 
and we'll get started adding the sugar just a little bit at a time. Welcome back, and I have been busy as a bee during the break getting the sugar incorporated into the egg whites. And as you can see throughout the process, you can tell that the egg whites started getting thicker and thicker. So as it becomes thicker, you want to just increase that speed just a little bit as you go. And I added the sugar about five tablespoons of sugar at a time. The sugar was also put through a sieve five times to make sure that it was just as fine as it could be. So as you can see by doing that, there's always going to be a little bit of sugar that doesn't go through the sieve. So that's why you want to measure a little bit more than you need so you can measure it again after you've gone through the sifting process. Okay, this looks like it's got the stiff peaks that we're looking for. So I'm going to turn the mixer off. And as you can see, we've got those nice stiff peaks on this beater. And now this is the fun part. This is kind of like the handwork. If you're a seamstress, you get off the sewing machine and you start doing the stuff by hand. Now I'm going to start adding my ingredients, my dry ingredients, which is cake flour that has also been sifted through that sieve five times with half a cup of the sugar added to the flour. So we've done that, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle it lightly over this batter. And this is where you really need a nice long handled spatula because part of the incorporation process means that you're going all the way to the bottom of this bowl with a nice big stroke and just flip it over as you go. So just cut in, fold over, cut in, and fold over. And you can just see how light and airy this is going to be. So I'm using a half of a cup measuring cup to distribute this. And you know, angel food cake is just one of the best and most versatile desserts. First of all, because it, you know, is light in calories, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more um, in just a few minutes, but it's also child-friendly, it's dietary needs-friendly. It would just be a great choice if you're planning a dinner party to go with angel food cake. And I've got some really great ideas for you on how to make it really versatile in terms of presentation and taste. All right, so we've got this last little bit to incorporate. And now the pan that I'm going to use for this is a just a regular sponge cake pan, different from a bunt cake pan in that it comes in two pieces so it separates. And you really want to make sure that you have one that's good and clean, that you're not using it for other things because any trace of grease or cooking spray or pan spray will keep this from rising like it's supposed to. All right, so this is all incorporated. So now I'm going to bring my pan over. And I chose one this time that has the legs on the top because the cooling process for this is also very interesting. So you just want to drop it one spatula amount at a time. And can you believe how light and airy this is? I just love it. And there's really no real technique other than you just want to be really gentle with it. So as you get to the bottom, just try to take it as slowly as you can. 
I've almost got it out. And then we're gonna take a metal spatula and run it around the inside of it just to incorporate some of that air to get out. So I'm just gonna take a metal spatula, I'm gonna take it and just run it through the batter and kind of even it out at the top. And then this is gonna go in a 375 degree oven and you wanna make sure that the rack is in the bottom third of the oven. So I'm gonna get this going and when we come back from the break, I'm gonna show you how to make it really special on the inside. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. I've got a question here from Michelle Purington in Savannah. And Michelle writes, when serving ice cream and cake, do you use a spoon or a fork? Well, Michelle, I've got a quick demo for you. Ice cream and cake is the traditional American dessert, especially for birthdays. So let's talk about the proper use of your silverware. Where it goes in terms of placement is the spoon that goes at the top with the handle facing to the right. The fork, if you're using for dessert, goes at the top with the handle facing to the left. In terms of which utensil is proper to use for ice cream and cake, it's a matter of personal preference. For me, I love to use the spoon because I want a little bit of ice cream and cake in each bite. An English method that's appropriate would be to actually push the cake onto the spoon with your fork using both pieces of silverware. Always remember that when you're finished, put that spoon at four o'clock on your plate. Michelle, I hope that answered your question. And if you've got a question for me, send it to askvera at wsav.com. And I want to remind everybody that Dine South is coming up October 15th. It's from six to nine. You don't want to miss it. Great chefs from all over the South. Um, if you want more information, go to dinesouth.com. Welcome back, and we are way on our way to having a delicious angel food cake surprise in just a minute, too, that goes with a, a different twist that I'm going to do to this treatment. So while we were away during the break, I got the cake that I prepared earlier in the oven on 375 and got it in the third part of the oven, the bottom third for that pan to rest. And as you can see, it is baking up beautifully. Uh, you know, above the edge of the pan, it just looks fantastic. So this is one that I did ahead. And as you can see, if I do say so myself, it turned out really great. So I'm, I'm excited about it. So what we're gonna do now is, certainly I could eat this entire cake just like it is, but I wanna do something a little different to it and show you a technique that will have your guests wowed when you have your next dinner party. So I'm gonna take a serrated knife and what I wanna do is cut the top third of this cake off. So if you'll just rotate the plate as you go and just keep your eye on the edge so that you are making a straight line, you're just going through to the center and this is gonna lift off and then we're gonna do a special treatment to the inside. So I'm just gonna flip that right off onto a plate and now I've got a cake stand that I'm gonna use. This makes it a little bit easier to have it right at that right height. So I'm gonna put this up here. This can be your serving piece too, and we'll clean up all of that when we're through. Now this is really fun and something that the kids will wanna do because you can eat what you're pulling off as you go through it. But I'm gonna take another smaller knife and I want to go around the outside edge about an inch away from the edge, but I don't want to cut all the way through it. You want to go almost to the bottom, but not quite. And again, just use your 
cake stand. And if you've got one of those revolving cake stands, that would be awesome to use for this. All right, so I'm doing the one inch all the way around. Now I'm gonna go close to that center hole and do the same motion again. And just going around. And here again, this is something that you don't want the, the little one to use the sharp knife, but they can get involved with the next part. Now you're gonna take the knife and just make some little cuts so that you can start lifting out the cake. And this is where everybody wants to jump in because they want to eat what you're getting rid of. So little by little, you're just going to go around and lift that off. So I've got a couple of different filling ideas. The one that I did earlier, I cut up some fresh strawberries, as you can see, and I put just a little bit of sugar in those. And I'm going to add some whipped cream to it so it almost becomes a built-in strawberry shortcake. But the one that I'm going to use for this, I'm going to add a little bit of a fall touch to it. But I'm a huge nut lover. I love any kind of nut. In fact, I could probably eat nuts for every meal. But I've toasted, um, crystallized some almonds, and I'm going to add the whipped cream to that. So now I've got my cavity ready. I've got some whipped cream that I'm gonna add to some butterscotch that I lightly softened in the microwave. So I'm just gonna make just, just a nice little filling out of that. Just enough whipped cream to make it pliable. And now I'm gonna start adding that to the inside. So this becomes your filling to the center of the cake. And I just, you know, you could do this with chocolate. Um, any, any of the fillings that you like to put on top of yogurt would be great in the inside of this cake. So once I've gone all the way around, I'm gonna go back on top of it with a little bit of the the toasted almonds like this, which will give it a nice crunch, which will be wonderful because the angel food cake itself is so light. So I'll do that. So once I've gone all the way around the outside, I'll put the lid back on. And when we come back from the break, I'm gonna show you how to ice it. And then better than anything, we're gonna slice it and I'm gonna get to try it. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back, and as you can see, this is a fantastic finale for any dinner party or any special occasion that you're gonna have. And you know, we all think that the finale is gonna be this huge fattening thing that we're gonna hate to eat, or we're so full from dinner we don't want to be rude to the hostess because we don't say yes to dessert. Well, you've got all of that completely solved right here. So while we were away during the break, I got the cake out of the oven and you want to immediately invert it. So unlike a pound cake or a layer cake where you let it cool in the pan for a few minutes, you're gonna flip that cake over and the pan that I used had the feet on it but I still put a cooling rack under it. Or you can use a wine bottle to, to you know, lift it off the counter and cool it that way. So it's over there cooling and I'm gonna be icing that in a little bit too. But I wanted to show you the one that I did ahead with the strawberries and whipped cream. And as you can see, the center part of this cake just has a phenomenal filling. It just turned out really beautifully. And I'm gonna just take some half cut strawberries and go around the outside edge and on this, this really unique um, 
leaf cake platter is just the perfect introduction to this cake. It could go for most any time of year and um, people love strawberries all year long so I really love that. And the other thing that I want to recommend when you're slicing a cake like this, using a serrated knife and actually doing a sawing motion will keep that from smushing down when you're cutting into it. I also refrigerated this cake for quite a number of hours for everything to set up before I did that. So here it is by the slice and it's just so pretty. I had some leftover strawberries, so I'm going to pour those over the top, add a little bit of this juice. Now this slice is a sixth, is one sixteenth of this cake, and all by itself without any icing or any fruit, it would be 72 calories. With the whipped cream and the fruit and the little bit of sugar that I added to flavor the whipped cream, you'd be at about 140 calories for a really nice size serving of dessert. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of those fantastic finales to a meal. Okay, then the other one that I did is the one with the butterscotch and the toasted almonds. And this just says fall to me, just the way that it turned out, the colors, that delicious filling and those Almonds are so crispy and crunchy, and then just a little bit of a bite of that really good sweet butterscotch is gonna make this quite a fantastic finish to your wonderful meal that you're gonna be planning anytime in the near future. So keep these in mind for holidays. And as always, our recipes are available on our website at veryvera.com. And you know, Angel Food Cake was one of the cakes that I could not ship in my business. So if you're out there and you remember one of your favorite cakes from Very Vera, I hope you will send that to me at vera at verivera.com. Tell me what your favorite was. I love Angel Food Cake, as you can see in this video from my childhood. So remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste and come back and join me again next weekend for the Very Vera Show.